Don't you hate it when you buy a bunch of aquarium plants with this dream of making a beautiful aquascape and they all end up dying? Yeah, after years of struggling with keeping aquarium plants alive, I've narrowed down my top seven beginner-friendly favorites that are cheap and hard to kill. Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish here with practical tips on nano fish and planted aquariums. And number one on my list of bulletproof plants has to be Anubias. I find them slightly easier to take care of compared to Java Fern, which I'll talk about later on in the list, but they come in many, many varieties. I think my favorites are Cuffifolia because it has those like rippled leaves. Of course, uh, Anubius Nana Petite because they're so tiny and very versatile in aquascaping. And then this large mystery Anubius that I put in Sonic's take and he uses like a betta hammock. Really cool. They are great because they don't require any kind of special substrate. You can attach them to rocks and driftwood using super glue gel and they can easily live off of low light and liquid fertilizers. Unfortunately, because they are on the slower growing side, they are prone to getting algae on the leaves. So ways you can combat that is plant them in the shadowiest, shadiest <laughs> part of your aquarium, farthest away from the aquarium light. You can use things like floating plants that will not only suck up the excess nutrients in the water, but also provide more shade for your Anubias, and then get the help of algae eaters such as nerite snails. The second plant on our list is the Dwarf Aquarium Lily, and I would consider it like the prettiest plant on my list, just because you can see in a tank full of greenery, the leaves really stand out, almost like the showpiece, the centerpiece of this tank. I want one almost in every one of my aquariums because these red brown leaves that are kind of triangular arrow shaped, there's some on the bottom, some in the middle, and then it can send lily pads all the way up to the top. Some weaknesses to be aware of is sometimes you will get a dwarf aquarium lily bulb and it may end up being a dud where it never sprouts. So if you bought it from a reputable company like Aquarium Co-op, they will send you out another one for free. So that's good to know. And then another thing is if you notice little holes in the leaves, that is a sign that the plant is getting really hungry, is not getting enough nutrients. So make sure to plug in more root tabs down below or use some kind of nutrient rich substrate to feed it. Number three on the list is Pogo Stemensilatus octopus. And I promise I'm not just going down the list of all the plants in this tank. I really do like it because you may have heard of the adage where faster growing plants tend to die faster if you're not giving it everything it needs versus slow growing plants are slower to die and a little more forgiving if you're a beginner. And so because of that, I have not traditionally had a lot of luck with fast growing plants, stem plants especially, such as I've killed Bacopa, Ludwigia, Moneywort, you name it. But Pogo Stem Instillatus, it refused to give up on me. It was so, it was one of the only stem plants I was able to keep alive for a very long time. It is a faster growing plant, but I feel like it was slower to die compared to even Water Sprite or Wisteria. I really like it because it provides a lot of cover for fry, especially in this tank. The platy adults like to eat any offspring they make. Just give it as much light as you can and liquid fertilizers and it will grow to its heart's content. It's also very easy to propagate like most stem plants. You just trim off kind of the upper half, replant it somewhere else in the tank and that will become a new plant. The only weakness I can think of is maybe if you're running like a high light CO2 tank and really pumping those nutrients and light to it, it's probably going to grow out of control within a week. So you'll have to do a lot of pruning in order to make sure it doesn't kind of outshade, outcompete the other plants. Number four on the list is a floating plant. Amazon frog bit. So personally, I actually like the appearance of other floating plants better, such as dwarf water lettuce and red root floaters. But when it comes to the needs of a beginner, is it hardy? Does it grow easily? Is it hard to kill? Amazon frog bit is definitely the one I vote for. It will, like many floating plants, suck tons of excess nutrients from the water and use it to create more leaves and little plantlets, reproducing very quickly. But unlike other floating plants like duckweed, the Amazon frog bit leaves are a lot bigger, so they're really easy to remove. In fact, I just, every time I do a water change, I just take some out every time and it doesn't get out of control. 
Frogbit likes to grow really long, thick, bushy roots that are great for hiding fry. Uh, although I do sometimes accidentally break them when I'm doing water changes if I'm not careful. So sometimes what I like to do is contain the frogbit in a ring of airline tubing and that way it's easy to move them around and get them out of my way. Speaking of breeding fish and shrimp, I gotta have a moss on this list. So number five on my beginner plant list is Christmas moss. I chose it because it's compared to some of the other mosses, it's cheaper, more readily available. I feel like it's a little less messy looking compared to Java fern. They don't have a lot of requirements. They can survive in low light, use liquid fertilizer, doesn't necessarily have to be in substrate. In fact, you can attach it to hardscape or it often comes on a piece of mesh. And once it really gets going, you can start selling it for profit. So in my case, I actually had it in my cherry shrimp breeding for pro profit tank. And I noticed that it was getting really thick and dense. And so I just would trim off uh, the tips. I would use sewing thread and wrap the moss around kind of squares or rectangles of black craft mesh. And then once that section, the new section started propagating and growing thick enough, then I would sell them at my local fish store for profit. So really cool. You can sell shrimp and moss from the same tank. At number six, we are finally getting to Java Fern. So like Anubius, it is cheap, hard to kill, it doesn't require substrate, it can live in low light and just use the all-in-one liquid fertilizer. But the reason why I had it later on the list is because some people have had trouble just growing java fern and having it thrive for some reason. There's just been a lot of reports of browning leaves and then when the plant is in distress a lot of times the leaves will grow little plantlets off of it in hopes that the plantlets will eventually float off and grow somewhere else where the conditions are more favorable. I had this giant java fern over here up in the front and at some point it's just started getting a lot of holes in the plant leaves. And even though I was using an all-in-one fertilizer through various water tests, I found out that, at least for me, I have soft water. So I needed to add more minerals into the tank in the form of Seachem Equilibrium, as well as I was really low in potassium for some reason. So I feel like this Java Fern, it really likes that high potassium environment. And once I started dosing that, it has stopped developing holes and new leaves are finally starting to form. So no more little baby plantlets everywhere. For my last category on this list, uh, okay, so a lot of people like my coworkers, Lizzie and Corey, they just love cryptocorian plants. I want to love crypts, but they don't always do well for me. Um, a lot of beginners, they are confused by crypt melting, where you bring home a brand new crypt, you put it in your aquarium and all the leaves fall off. And you're like, what, what just happened? Because they, the crypt, plants, they are very sensitive to environmental changes. So when they go from a plant farm being grown out of water immersed to being submerged into underwater completely in your tank, they don't like that and they have to shrink back and grow brand new leaves to recover. Now I expected crypt melt when they first get into my tank, but what happened for me is when I started adding more potassium to help that java fern grow, grow all of my crypts melted back. And it's been months still, and they are still very, very slowly growing back. Like you can see this plant right here, tiny, tiny leaves versus this one was purchased after the whole potassium situation. So it still has big leaves. And I don't like how crypts can melt after the fact. In fact, George Farmer has a video where he had these beautiful tall crypts they melted back for some mysterious reason after being in his aquarium for a really long time. And he actually ended up pulling them out because they take so long to recover and to get to that height and that growth level. So for number seven, I am going to not recommend all crypts, but one specific species, which is Cryptocorin lucens. And I like it because smaller crypts seem to be less likely to melt compared to broadleaf crypts like a crypt wind denti. And the reason why I didn't recommend crypt parva is because it's much smaller and I feel like it propagates or grows a lot slower than crypt lucens. This is an excellent foreground plant. It has these little kind of oblong, smaller paddle shaped leaves. And Man, this thing is has done so well for me. As you may know, I've had several aquarium disasters, planted tank failures, 
And this Crip Lucens is several years old and has gone with me from tank to tank to tank as I keep restarting it. It may melt back a little bit, but it readily starts producing new leaves once the water parameters have uh, kind of settled down a little bit. So I'm very happy with this purchase. It continues to produce new nodules or little plantlets off the side, and I can't wait to see what happens with it uh, in a few years from now. If you're still having problems keeping your aquarium plants alive, make sure to check out my video on how to balance a planted tank because I spent two years figuring out that process and I definitely want people to learn from my experiences. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.